is better than medicine, they say. And you slept more than once around the clock. That's enough to cure an elephant. <laughs> Can't make out where you are, can you? Well, what do you care? You're alive and you're not supposed to be. My watchdogs, 845 of them to be exact, told me to go out after you. Wasn't for those cagey little beasts, some coyote would have had you for breakfast. Easy now, son. Easy, I said. <laughs> Freeze your hand. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> well, that's the beauty of a bullet. Talks everybody's language. Before a bullet, all men are equal, like in the Constitution. The bullet has authority. Oh, there's no two ways about it. I believe in authority. Don't you? <laughs> Not given to talking, are you, son? I get you, son. I get you. Same here. I came here 15 years ago to be by myself. Haven't got a mirror in the place. Even my own reflection's too much company. Let me tell you something. You're either a fool or you're bats. Does the word bats mean anything to you outside of baseball? You know, I could have gotten nosy while you were slumbering, but I didn't. I believe that a man's body is strictly private territory, and I'm no trespasser. <laughs> Keep them mitts up at the ceiling, as if you want to be congenial. If not, you've got yourself a partner and we'll make the fur fly. I don't mind wrecking the place for a good cause. Time to get acquainted, son. Take off the coat. you try it, they still have some vacancies. All right, son. Perfectly all right. Your feet must be as raw as horse meat. Sit down. How long have you been at the dungeon? Forever and ever. How long? Two years. Ezra's the name. Ezra Thompson. Cactus, if you want to be chummy. Yours. John Howard Barrington. What's the difference? Oh, no difference. I just want to know what to call you, that's all. You know what to call me. You called me a fool. You said I was bats. That's right. You are a fool. I'll tell you why. The last one tried to beat the dungeon. Wound up in my turkey coop. About 12 years ago. An old geezer. Real old. Grandpa said to him, as one old gooseberry to another, you haven't got a chance. Why, it's ten miles from here to the dungeon. And how long did it take you to make it? Ten hours, said Grandpa. And he could hardly talk. Ten hours, I said. Ten hours of fighting the desert on foot? Well, you never about killed yourself. Boundless and bare. The lone and level sands stretch far away. You think you've made it because you're here. Well, that's what Grandpa thought. You know what I told him? Grandpa, I said, I'm going to turn you right in. Why, said Grandpa, why don't you let me go? Let you go, I said. Where to? The next town? Where well, everybody's waiting for you, not only the law. You're a marked man. <laughs> Pick yourself up and eat. Turkey mulligatawny. It's my own special. Ezra's Desert Delight, they call it. Not a burp in a pot full. <laughs> Ezra's Desert Delight. <laughs> Next to the Grand Canyon, it's the greatest thing west of the Mississippi. Ah, darn sight better than the old smelling sauce, eh, son? Let me 
let me ask you something. Do you really believe violence is the way out? I'm sorry. Sorry. That's all I ever hear. I hate the word. Should be stricken from the English language by act of Congress. Just say sorry, and all guilt is dismissed. Sorry. It's like a sponge. Whatever it is, wipes it off. Just like that. I lost my head. Twice in one day you lost your head. Twice? Then you must have been out of your mind to go over the wall. We all are where I come from. Are you? Really? I can't answer that. The more I deny it, the more you'd believe it. I suppose so. Frankly, I don't know. That's why I ran away, to find out. Make sure. How? I don't know. Yet. More? Hmm. Please. What are you going to do? Do what? About me. You want my two cents worth? Go back. Save trouble for both of us. Go back? To that pest hole of creatures with bodies and no minds? Oh, I see. You're different. You're persecuted. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yes. And no. That's a good answer. Sometimes I feel I'm persecuted and sometimes I don't. Insanity. What would you say insanity is? I should know, shouldn't I? If you did, you wouldn't be where you are. Well, I may not know all the answers, but some. Insanity is the lack of knowledge between right and wrong, they say. Not in the abstract, mind you. But in the particular act. Particular act. What act? Whatever it is you've done against society. The crime. What was your particular act? I don't know. I can't remember. I feel no guilt whatsoever. That's why they say I'm out of my mind. That makes sense. Doesn't it? Well, I don't know. I'm awfully confused. If I have no sense of guilt, and I haven't, then maybe I didn't do what they accuse me of. Maybe I'm innocent. Who gave you that notion? No one. They said I was insane. They had evidence to prove it, and I believed them. Well, I don't anymore. From now on, I have to prove it to myself. I have to find out whether I committed that crime or not. Suppose you did. If I did? I'd give myself up. And you expect me to believe that? It wasn't until the other day that my mind began kicking up. Now I feel that somewhere there's something I don't know, which I should know. What's that? It's funny how it started. I was down on my knees scrubbing the floor. It was in the section where they keep the violent cases, the homicidal ones. Everything was as usual. Some of them were lying on their cots in their everlasting stupor. Some were pacing up and down their cages. Up and down. Up and down. Walking around the world over the years within a space of no more than five feet. One of the inmates was coming down the corridor toward me. Whoopie, they called him. Friendly little fellow, harmless as a kitten. 
Next thing I heard was Gargantua's voice. Whoopi Gargantua coaxed. Come over here, boy. I got a story for you. They whispered together, and I went back to my scrubbing. Suddenly, there was a terrifying scream. <laughs> I wanted to get at them, to separate them. I wanted to, but I couldn't. I couldn't move. I was paralyzed. I wanted to yell, but there was no voice left in me. I couldn't get to her. I couldn't help her. Her? Did I say her? Oh, him. I meant him. Yes, that's what I thought. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, heard it on the way up here, I believe. <laughs> the wash dogs. Remember? My turkeys. Anybody comes within two miles of here, I know about it at once. You expecting anybody? Why, no. But folks around here don't wait for no written invitation. Oh, don't flatter me, Warden. The light in your window said, come in, so we came in. Hello, Ezra. Hi, Pete. But, hello, Doc. Hi. How about a little round of hearts, huh? Might have better luck this time. Shallow men believe in luck. Strong men believe in cause and effect. A half will get you a buck. Who said that? <laughs> Emerson. Forget the game. That's all you get out of me tonight. I'll get you one of these days. I could go for something liquid. All right. Something for the throat? Uh, something for the brain. Something for the brain. Can't do me no harm. I got no brain. Count me in on a little schnapps. I feel like I've been through a mix master. Some rough day we had. I imagine so. Why? Why what? I said we had a rough day. That's right. Why well, say it twice? And you said I imagined so. That's right. Just because you fellas had some trouble. That's all. How did you know? I heard something on the radio. You have no radio. That's right. You call that funny. Why, <laughs> no, no. An old bushwhacker like me trying to be funny now, that, that, that would be silly, wouldn't it? Who told you? The turkeys. Mind letting me in on the turkey's secret? Oh, now, fellas, there's no need of getting excited. Whatever it is, you know more about it than I do. All I know is two hours ago, my turkey started acting up. That's all. Somebody come by here? I went outside but didn't see anybody. It was dark. I heard no car. So whoever it was must have been navigating on their own power. That's him, all right. Who's him? One of our inmates who decided to go for a little air. Oh, just like that. You know better. It takes a lot of help and a lot of cunning. He had both. Crazy like a fox. Most of them know when they go for a walk, they're doomed. He's so far gone, he didn't even realize that. He'll be dead before morning. He will, eh? If not, and he manages to reach town, they're ready for him. We just come from there. There'll be a reward of $200 on his head. That dangerous. A killer. They gave him the death penalty. And then his sentence was commuted to life imprisonment in the asylum. Suppose he manages to stay on his feet. And you don't catch him. I even hate to think about it. <laughs> Look at you, all of you, big shots. <laughs> Why, you're scared spitless. We're on the spot, he isn't. He's one of those I don't remember cases. And what has he got to lose? As long as the governor has no ulcers, loss of memory is a passport to immunity from the hot seat. You think he's faking? No, I don't. If he were, he'd be normal. He'd be just an ordinary liar. His brain would act as a brake on his emotion. 
But he's not. And that's the danger. A medical professor of Harvard once said... Attention, please. The sage of the sagebrush talking. I firmly believe, the professor said, that if the whole materia medica was sunk to the bottom of the sea, it would be all the better. I know that one. It would be all the better for mankind and all the worse for the fish. Very funny. Proves what? Proves we stink. You, I, all of us. That's what it proves. Huh. There's a killer on the prowl and we're the ones who stink. He doesn't. We do. If he's insane, he's sick. And if he's sick, he needs help. But he doesn't want help. Uh, maybe he does. That would be funny. Is that why you broke out? To look for another doctor? No. To look for another victim. Who was the first one? Rose Marie, his girlfriend. Co-ed at Southern California, where he got his law degree just before the killing. The boy was adopted. His foster father is Cyrus Barrington. Does that mean anything to you? Not exactly. Sounds like chairman of the board or something. Like oil or big steel. What interests me is what's underneath that glossy surface. What about the real parents? It might be a case of hereditary insanity. We have no way of knowing. We can't dig into his past. He has no past. He has no family that could give us a clue. That isn't the point, Doc. There hasn't been one successful escape in the annals of the institution. And I'm going to see to it that it stays that way. Good night. Good morning. Good night, Ezra. Thanks for that brain stuff. Come on in, son. You got the green light. You know, you're a strange duck. What's strange about me? I'm an open book. Yeah, in Sanskrit. Why didn't you turn me in? Why didn't you? You've got something there, son. Why didn't I? Why the deuce didn't I? Tell you. I know what it is being fenced in. I got sick of jealousies and conventions. A million elbows in my ribs. The smugness of the human mind which pretends progress and civilization and has nothing to show but depressions and destruction. I'd rather argue with turkeys and books. Talk to a growing plant and have the howling wilderness sing me a lullaby. <laughs> nothing ever happens around here. But when it does, it must mean something. Call it fate. Call it a challenge. I'm not superstitious. But I guess I just have to meet it. Got caught. That's what it amounts to. And you're out 200 bucks. That's right, son. Besides being full of fancy fumes, I'm no businessman, I reckon. I'll get the money, though. Don't you worry. How? I'll put you to work. Fifty bucks a week. Four weeks, two hundred bucks. <laughs> Maybe I'm a businessman. <clears throat> Noises, I think music is the least disagreeable. Don't you? You heard what the man said. I'm a killer, a menace. <laughs> and I'm an accessory after the fact. You may have the life of an innocent girl on your conscience. If I did it the first time, I might do it again if it's in me. The man could be right. You give yourself the benefit of the doubt, don't you? That's all I do. Mr. 
Mr. Cyrus Barrington, Warden. Gentlemen, I am Warden Anderson, Dr. Gordon, head of our medical staff. Dr. David Dunbar, friend of the family. Won't you be seated, the gentlemen? Thank you. Dr. Dunbar calls himself my severest critic. I call him a nuisance. <laughs> I have a confession to make, Doctor. I'm allergic to irrelevant laughter. An Englishman. No sense of humor. Well, what do you expect? <laughs> I didn't mean to offend you. Oh, I beg your pardon, Doctor. Actually, I'm as meek as a turtle dove. Oh, I understand. We all have our little idiosyncrasies. The California sunshine has converted Dr. Dunbar into a native. Oh, not only the sunshine, or the Chamber of Commerce. Actually, John and I met during the Blitz in London. He asked me over here on a visit, and I've been the man who came to dinner ever since. Oh, you're a physician, Doctor. Well, I don't know how I'm expected to answer that. I'm a psychologist. Oh. You're practicing here now? I'm afraid so, yes. I don't know whether you gentlemen suspect the nature of this meeting. I suppose it has something to do with the unfortunate event involving your son. My adopted son. I understand there's a reward of $200 offered for the boy's capture. That's correct. Do you believe that is a uh, sufficient incentive for those looking for him? Even if there wasn't any reward at all, Mr. Barrington, our men would keep on looking for him. They're employees of the state. Yes, but uh, if some private citizen should, uh, let us say, get involved. If a private citizen should become his accomplice, I'm afraid money won't talk. I'm fully aware of my responsibility. Your responsibility? What Mr. Barrington wants to say, I think, is that he feels it is duty to society to prevent a repetition of this tragedy. And how does Mr. Barrington propose to do his duty to society? I'm prepared to raise the reward to $5,000. You'll notice that the check is certified. Hmm. I don't think it'll serve its purpose, Mr. Barrington. If you two gentlemen would cooperate, there is a way to ease the tension on Mr. Barrington. Is there? Mr. Barrington feels that until John is recaptured, he is entitled to protection. Yes. Uh, in view of the psychological complications involved, I believe this suggestion is not an unreasonable one. Thank you, gentlemen. Goodbye, Walton. Good day. Glad to have met you, Doctor. Doctor. Poor, grief-stricken father. He's full of fear, that's what he is. So are we. What did he do when John was indicted? He disinherited him. That was one of his responsibilities to society, I imagine. What else could he have done? Left a fortune to a lunatic? Cyrus Barrington. The story of a success. That story was written with ice water. Cactus the old gopher was right. We stink, but good. Barrington has a point, though. Has he? It might pay off to watch his place. It might. I hope it doesn't. Fine thing for me to be saying. that age is not only something you fill out in an application blank. Sciatica, the doctor calls it. Colorful name for such a dread pain. <laughs> Wonderful language, Latin, isn't it? Anything I can do? Sure can. Keep up the good work. You remember when I told you, watch me, watch me from dawn till dusk, and you'd get the hang of it? Now, it didn't take you long, did it? Three weeks. Let me look at your paws. <laughs> Calluses. The dog tag of hard labor. <laughs> Agrees with the doesn't it, son? You know, I think I'll put a nad in the paper. Feeling low, feeling run down, no pep, no soir de vivre. 
Then spend a few weeks at Thompson's Turkey Ranch. Guaranteed to restore your appetite, your muscles, your vim and vigor, and all your natural hankerings. And every day, Thanksgiving Day. Confounded beast, they keep you worried, don't they? I get sick, so what? I get well. One of them falls sick, and ten to one is a dead one. We're practically out of feed for these chickens. Yeah, I know. I've got to go to town. Well, you can't, not with your bones all locked up. I've got to. I'll go for you. Ah, oh, you're crazy. I'm sorry, I forgot about that. Oh, now, cut it out, son. You know I didn't mean it that way. You don't trust me, huh? I do, but the police don't. Now, look, you're not going to risk everything for a bunch of jangle-brained birds, are you? Well, they mean your life. Yes, and if you make one false move, it means yours. Not necessarily. Don't get any ideas. Don't try to be a hero. I'm not a hero, but if only 100 of them die, it means a loss of $600. You're just a stubborn fool. <laughs> Stubborn old fool, son. Old fool, I must insist. An old fool is better than a young one. That's for sure. Even a fool sometimes gives good counsel. An ancient Greek discovered that. If you flip your wings, you'll be heading for trouble you don't even think of. Say, it's been two years now since they took you out of circulation, is that right? Yes. Hmm. Haven't seen a girl since, have you? No. Why? Why? Woman is man's confusion. You should know. I don't know what you mean. Simple, mister. It's simple. I've hitchhiked before. I know what goes with it. Every time my neighbor's a guy behind a wheel, there's a lot of dialogue thrown my way. It turns my stomach. But that's the charge for the hospitality. Go ahead, mister. Turn my stomach. What do you want to know? I don't want to know anything. You're not the curious type? Definitely not. <laughs> That's a new one. You kidding? No. You must be. Why did you stop in the first place? I wonder. I know. I look like a heck of a nice girl to you, don't I? Frankly, no. You just haven't gotten around to it yet, believe me. Well, mister, I'll give you a break. You might as well know it now. I'm no lily, not at all. But my morals have no zipper. Let it go at that. You don't try to save my beautiful soul. It kills me. Why should I? You shouldn't, but you would. You'd wind up telling me that underneath this hard-boiled surface of mine, there must be something soft as a powder puff. There isn't, mister. Interesting. In getting to know you, I'm getting to know myself. Service is on the house. That's as far as it goes. Cash and Gary Connie, they call me. I worked in a drive-in, and I had that embroidered across my jacket. My father used to say, money makes the man. As far as I'm concerned, money makes the woman, too. He only said it. I mean it. It's just being realistic. Get it? That isn't hard to get. Look, the man of the world. I'm glad we understand each other. There's nothing else to be discussed, is there? You mind if I take a nap? No.
I've known all sorts of people. But you're a sort all by yourself. Don't say that. What's eating you? It isn't true. I'm not different. All right, you're not. You hardly know me, and yet you say I'm different. Why? We've been here now for an hour or so. Doing nothing but look at the sun, listen to the wind. It's kind of boring, don't you think? I'd rather look at myself in the mirror and make faces. I'm satisfied. To me, it's an image spelling freedom. Where are you headed for? Los Angeles. Employed, yes. Profession singing waitress. You got a voice? <laughs> If I had a voice, I wouldn't be singing while serving knockout drops. What's needed for a job like that? Nothing. Except a boss who likes you. Who's he? It's a fella named Level Louie. A beer joint on South Main, big time. Gifts for important customers. Gifts? Mm -hmm. Brass knuckles for the ladies, guns for the gentlemen. No. Yes. I'll show you how Level Louie is. The guns are loaded. And his checks are good. What are you doing here, then? Well, uh, vacation. <laughs> I took a job on a dude ranch about 20 miles from here. The Casa Gustavo, they call it. And don't ask me who the boss is. He's a guy by the name of Gustav. Singing waitress? No. Waitresses there don't sing, they cry. They act as doctors and barbers. All you ever discuss with the guests is their stomachs and the weather. No dough, no fun. Just the smell of milk and fertilizer. How long did you hold out? Six weeks. That's all you can take. After that, you start yelling again. Main Street, here I come. It's getting chilly. I have to protect my source of income. Where did you get this scarf? <laughs> you ask the funniest questions. Where did you get this scarf? What difference does it make? I want to know who gave you this scarf. And you're not the curious type. Oh, no, definitely not. Not you. Tell me. All right. You're too wacky for me, mister. The dollar chain stores gave it to me for 89 cents. Oh, what's all the breeze about a cheap piece of silk? I'm sure I've seen this scarf before. Sure you're sure. <laughs> you think for 89 cents you get an exclusive? It was around a girl's neck, just like yours. Don't. <laughs> you tickle. Come in? No, thanks. All right. Maybe I'll run into you again sometime. Didn't you forget something? Did I? You promised to lend me $10 for my bus fare. I'll be right back. Suppose you're not. It won't take me long.
never thought is would go in for anything like that. What do you mean? You're his hired hand, you say? That's right. It's hard to take knowing Israel. Guess he's getting old. He's been old ever since I knowed him. Never needed nobody. He isn't feeling so well these days. Well, who is? That's right. Mind if I get personal? No. You sort of look like I've seen you before. Well, this face of mine comes in carloads. It ain't the face, it's what's in the face. Yours tells a tale, friend. Uh, been around these parts for long? A while. Worked on a ranch before. Where? Casa Gustavo. Gus? What do you know? Bet he didn't tell you he used to be a wrestler. He used to do his stuff right here at the Legion Hall. Boy, he had arms like a pipeline. Good boy, Gus. That should do it. Well, I hate to see Cactus going softy. <laughs> you tell him, will you? Sure will. A deal's a deal, I always say. No two ways about it. Three drinks, that's a dollar fifty. Plus fifty cents for you, Jack. That makes two dollars each, right? Well, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Much obliged, Tom. That's right. Now, for each drink, we chip in an equal amount for the lady. That's the deal. That makes 75 cents for each of us, Sid. Well, here's my share, lady. There you are. And here's Sid's. Lady? Excuse me, boys. Excuse me, nothing. It's a friend of mine. Who is a friend of yours? This one? Uh, that ain't no friend of yours. We buy the drinks, don't we? Where I come from, who buys the drinks is your friend. That makes us your friends, don't it? Let me out of here. Bertha here says... My name ain't Bertha. To me, you're Bertha. Bertha says beat it. This guy's looking for a headache. I can see that. What's say, Sid? Bash him in the stomach first, then stove his teeth in. And Better then... start with the crackers. Better. If you give it to him in the bread basket, oh, good. He's out. Where's the fun? Makes sense, Sid. Oh. Wanna play? If not, hoof it out. He wants to play. You do want to play. <laughs> this is going to be good, this is. Call the police. Police? What for? But those two baboons will murder him. Oh, don't worry about that. That's just a friendly little get-together. <laughs> Are you out of your mind, you stupid pigeon? All right, all right. But it's no good, I tell you. Get me the sheriff, please. Bad for the reputation of the house to mess with the law. Keep everything in the family and your letter off. <laughs> This is Jack, Sheriff, the waiter. Jack, over at the Silver Saddle. Yeah, yeah. uh-huh. I hope it didn't disturb you, Sheriff. Get your hand away from our... Uh, say, there's a lady here that insisted on me calling you. Why? Well, well I'll tell you, Sheriff, it's a difference of opinion. <laughs> yeah, I... I... Uh, what's it? Go on, Sheriff. Oh, that! That's three customers wailing the tar out of each other. <laughs>
Hi, Sheriff. Boys? Sheriff? Hi. What's the trouble? Trouble? No trouble. Just letting off steam, eh, Tom? That's right, Sheriff. You said it. Saturday night, you know. No harm done. No harm. They beat the bejabers out of the guy. We did? Did we? What guy? He's gone, I guess. Who is he? The guy she says they beat the bejabers out of. We don't know him, do we? Uh -huh. Friend of Bertha's here. Well? I don't know him. Well, you said he was a friend of yours. He isn't any friend of mine. You said he was. I only knew him a few hours. What's his name? I don't know. What else don't you know about him? Nothing. Nothing. Nice fellow he was. You in the habit of picking up strangers just as long as they're nice? I didn't pick him up. He picked me up. You know your name? Yes. Great. Let's have it. Connie Carter. Didn't you call her Bertha? What do you want to know, what he calls me or what my birth certificate calls me? Your business here. None. I wouldn't do any business here if you gave me the key to this hick town. Easy, girl. I'm just passing through. Where to? L.A. And that's just where you're going, right now. There's a bus leaving here in 15 minutes. If I see you again, I'll pull you in. Why? You can't charge me with anything. Can't I? Vagrancy, for instance? How does that sound to you? I'm no vagrant. I'm a waitress. Never mind. You heard me. Run along, miss.
Well, it's me. Don't get excited. Don't tell me what to do, you treacherous reptile. It's a nice day. Why spoil it? Well, I haven't seen you since yesterday noon. Where have you been? In town. Where did you sleep? Right here. Why didn't you come in? I didn't want to disturb you. You're sick. Oh, I ought to beat your brains out, except you haven't any. I wish you were right. If I didn't have a brain, I wouldn't have a sick one. What happened? The turkeys are all right now. Are you? Sure. Tell me. There's nothing much to tell. How much? Hardly anything. Hardly anything, eh? Been in a fight? Mm. Barroom brawl. You know, it starts for no reason. No reason being a girl, of course. Mm. I hate to pull the old I told you so stuff. But I told you so, didn't I? So what? I'm all right, I tell you. Nobody recognized me. All right, so you're all right. I borrowed $10 from the feed money I took. For the girl, of course. Nothing like that. I'm not interested in her. Oh, certainly not. She had a scarf I'm interested in. Is that so? I knew that scarf. Must be quite a wench. Did she restore your memory, too? No, she didn't, but the scarf did somehow. Are you serious? Dead serious. Rosemary was strangled with a scarf like that. And? That's all. That's all? You remembered. For the first time, you remembered. That's what matters. No, it doesn't. It only shows I lost all sense of proportion. I lost all sense, period. I thought I had something. What did I have? A bubble that burst. Scared? I can't help it. So far, at least, I've had doubts. Doubts may wreck you, but they let you believe what you want to believe. Facts don't. Suppose I am the one. Suppose I am. Suppose you aren't. It's worth taking a chance, isn't it? That's what I thought. Right now, I don't know. I'm afraid. Afraid? Why? Chances don't rule men. You've got to take one to win one. That's the way I look at it. Do you really? You wouldn't be here if I didn't. You know that. Why make me say it again, stupid? And for heaven's sake, don't say you're sorry. I won't. Scarf belonged to Rosemary? Yes. Gift of yours? No, David gave it to her. David? Pal of mine, my best friend. Heard from him lately? No, I haven't. I haven't heard from him at all. guy giving him the eye. What do you want me to do? Go over, shake his eye, and say, how do you do? I don't like the looks of his looks. Probably a connoisseur looking for atmosphere. I'm the atmosphere. You know that. It makes me nervous. Let's see what he wants. What's your guess, Louis? Silk underwear? I'd say he wants booze. Where is he? I don't know. Who is he? A cousin of mine. Sure. I call him an ex, you call him a cousin. Ex my foot. Something tells Shut me. Shut up! Something always tells you something. Whatever it is, it's a lot of goulash. Get out. I have some business in town. I need a room for tonight. I thought I maybe... I don't care what you thought. Get out. 
I have some money. If you help me, don't I can... Don't con me. I don't want your dough. Get out. Oh, give me a beer. It took me three bottles to get here. I might as well have another one. Forget it. Now, wait a minute. Get off my ear. This ain't no bunk for guys who take a powder. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't. Let me ask you a question. It sounds silly, but it isn't. Do you know who you are? Just answer yes or no. Do you or don't you? Are you out of your mind? Look who's asking. Certainly I know who I am. Well, listen, mister, listen carefully. So do I. Get it? So do I. You want to straight without the dressing? I know everything. I know all about you. And now for the last time, get out. I don't want any part of this mess, not even the money. I don't want any blood on my hands. I don't want any trouble with the police. I don't want to lose my job. Is there enough left in your upper strata to get that? <laughs> He's a friend of yours. He wants to see you for just a few seconds. Sorry, he refuses to give his name. It's strictly confidential, he says. Thank you, sir. You may go in now. Why have you come here? I expected that question. It deserves an answer. You read about my escape, I suppose. I did. The papers didn't say anything about my motive, did they? Motive? Yes. I didn't escape to beat the law. I don't see any future in being a fugitive from justice. All I want to know is whether I did what they claim I did. And you're the one that can give me the answer. I? What makes you think that? What have I got to do with it? Nothing. Except that something's happened since then that made me remember. 
You mean your memory's functioning again? Not entirely. But I do remember that you were with me when it happened. That's correct. I was. Do you recall anything else? No. Beyond that, my mind is still a blank. I'm leaving now, Doctor. All right. Oh, Miss Dean. Call up this number, will you? Tell them I'd be late. What I want to know from you is this. Why didn't you appear at the trial? Why did you stay away from me when they were smashing my life to bits? Why didn't you come up and say, wait a minute, gentlemen, I know better, I was there. That's just it. I couldn't come to your rescue because I knew better. I don't get it. I didn't want to incriminate you. You think I'm guilty. John, I know you are. Can you prove it to me? If you want me to, I... You can? Hello, Mr. Barrington. This is Dr. Dunbar's office. The doctor wants you to know your son is here. He came in just a few minutes ago. Yes, sir, that's all. Let's have some night, shall we? Night is the mother of thoughts, didn't somebody say? John, do you think it possible that you did it and forgot the details? It's just that I don't remember it at all. You're telling me that you did it. How can I say when I have no sense of guilt? But you think that you did it. It could have been me, yes. Then why not say that you did it, hmm? I don't know. I leave it to you. Do you remember a scarf? Yes, I do. The one you'd given her. What made you remember it? I saw it on another girl a few weeks ago. The same scarf? One just like it. What do you remember about the scarf? Rosemary had a scarf like that. When? That evening. What else do you remember about it? I can see her now. The scarf was so tight it was cutting into her neck. Yes. I don't want to think about it. When you were at the hospital, you were insane, weren't you? I must have been. In that case, do you agree that you must have been insane before you were committed to the hospital? I must have been. Do you think that you were so much out of your mind that you might have done it? It's possible. Would you say that I'm insane? No. I was the only one with you, wasn't I? Yes. Then if you were the only one who was insane, you were the one who did it. If you tell me so. David, did you actually see me do it? Yes. I'd gone for a walk. When I came back to the hilltop, you were right in the midst of it. Why didn't you stop me? I couldn't. I'll tell you why I couldn't. The shock. As if I plunged into icy water. My senses were numbed. I felt the blood rushing from my brain. I couldn't move. I wanted to, but I couldn't. I was petrified. Can you understand that? Yes. The same thing happened to me at the hospital when that poor fellow was strangled. Exactly the same thing. I did it.
Stay where you are. Don't worry, I know now I would have given myself up. That's what I had in mind all along. Sure you had. We believe you. We just came to give you transportation. It's a nice car waiting outside. The latest model. Kind of flow, radio, heater, even a telephone. How's that? Hold it. Feel better now? Summer rains may come and go when to look for them no one knows. Unexpected as love. Tell me, what's she got that I haven't got? Shh. I want to know. Later. As uncertain as life, the summer rains in the tropical heat. All life seems in vain, waiting for fate. Chick having trouble? The summer rains. Read it. You want me to read storm warnings? Storm warnings are up from Point Conception to Newport Beach. Small craft warnings are up until 9 p.m. Cut it. You asked me to read you something. What happened to the guy? What guy? The headline. They got him. I know that. How? His own father gave him away. Can you tie that? They found him in a doctor's office. A friend of his, too. She... I always say nice guys have nice friends. Time stands still. Days pass by. On and on, on and on. There's Tell me. Shh. Shh, nothing. The last time I asked you, you said later. Well, it's later now, isn't it? It must be. It was earlier then. All I want to know is what she's got I ever got. Summer rain. Always too few. Will wash away. Your blue. Too bad. I'll tell you what she's got I haven't got. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You satisfied? Plenty. S Scotch, quick. Another nightmare? Worse than that. This one you can't talk away. You know, you're a one-woman show. Even if you couldn't sing. What now? Nothing. That's bad. Nothing means plenty. You need any help besides this guy? Thanks, Louis. Hey, there's a guy here. I know. Giving me the eye. That's right. Take a look if you don't believe me. Who is he? Silly question. I know the answer. You don't know. That's right, I don't. Cousin? No. Never saw this moose in my life. And he wants an appointment. Find out. Whatever he is, he's a customer, I hope. Your name Connie? That's what my mother tells me. What'll it be? Ezra's mine. Ezra Thompson. Glad to meet you. What'll it be? I'd like to talk to you, ma'am. All right, talk. Well, this is just between you and me. On the QT, huh? Under the belt. Well, listen, mister, don't go any further. Everything's public here, including the phone. 
bring me a beer. This guy gives me the creeps. He wants to talk. Imagine. He could be my grandfather. What else? A beer. Beat it. I'll handle it. Hi, Pop. How are you this evening? The handle is Louie. Hey, I understand you want to chew the fan. I'm your man. Let's chew. It's fresh as paint, ain't you? <laughs> the other way around, Pop. They call me Level Louie. Level, you get it? Everything on the up and up. Straight as a deck seat. All clammed up. That's me. Well, then save your steam. I want to talk to that girl. Well, uh, she's pretty busy, Pop. Huh? You know how it is. I'll tell you what we'll do. You tell me, and I'll tell her. I'd call you a nitwit. I mean, I'm afraid you might say it ain't polite. You ain't gonna give us any trouble, are you, Pop? Huh? Maybe I will. I came 250 miles to see that filly. And that's how it's going to be. If not, I'm going to turn this moonshine parlor into a mashed potato. Now, don't think I'm chucking my weight around. No, no. Where I come from, they ripen with age. They get more powerful as they go on. Like old wine. Say no more, Pop. I know what you mean. You're after my own heart. You don't mince words. You play it fast and loose. Well, then what are you chirping about? Go and get her. Time's wasting, see, and I don't like waste. Connie! It all depends, I always say. It all depends on how you handle things. This way, that way, or the other way. You see what I mean, Pop? It all depends. Sit down, sugar. Pop's all right. In fact, he's okay. I mean it. Know him? Let me see that. I know that guy. Sure you know. Your cousin. I told you he ain't. No more than he is. He was here last night, sitting right where your pa. What did he say? He couldn't say much. I threw him out. Why, he thought you were his friend. That's why he came. Well, he was wrong. Don't you understand? I knew who he was. You did? I was afraid. What if it feel that way? Why didn't you go and collect the money? Why didn't you? Couldn't. See, when I first met him, he came in out of the night like a wounded deer. He was alone in the desert, alone in the world. I felt for him. I felt for him badly. So did I. Yeah, but you threw him right back to the wolves. I didn't want to get mixed up. Well, I got mixed up. He worked for me. You mean you were hiding him? Well, if you want to be harsh about it. Well, you could get five years in the can. I know I skipped the rules, but I just took a chance. Pop, let me shake your hand. That's something. I call that a deed. Is that the right word? What happens to you if he doubles up and squeals? Now, here's a yarn for you. An innocent man believed in an innocent man. The innocent man couldn't prove his innocence. That made him a criminal. And because of that, the other innocent man became a criminal. He believed. That's all he did wrong. No, no, there's many ways, but only one a man can go. How do you know which is which? I had no more reason to help him than you have. In fact, I resented it. But what good did it do? Something told me no. And something else said yes. Let's call it faith. Got some? I go to church. Faith is the evidence of things not seen, says the Bible. Now, that's what I mean when I say that boy is not guilty. He couldn't be, not if you know him the way I do. But it says here he confessed for the first time. Oh, let him confess all over the place. Let him shout it from the rooftops. He's not guilty. He just ain't, and that's all there is to it. Bring us another drink. What are you gonna have? Scotch for her. Same here. I need a good belt in the tonsils. This is rough. Don't worry, Pop. It's on the house. I feel greener on the gills. It's awful. This isn't the end yet, miss. It isn't. Not if you help me. What can I do? Plenty. But you've got to have the stuff to do it. I get goose pimples when you talk like that. This will take care of the goose pimples. There's a man gone by the boards who has as clean a vest as you or I. Mine ain't, Pop, I'm sorry to say. Well, his is anyhow. They're going to put that boy down for the count. Now, you don't want that to happen, do you? I get you, Pop. I'm with you. I know. I know from experience. I want nothing to do with them cops. Cops and cousins. Ah, fool. Oh, Doc. Over here. We've been waiting for you. I want you to meet my friend, Dr. Gordon. 
This is John's doctor at the institution. What are you trying to do? Tell me I'm crazy? Somebody is, I have a notion, but it ain't you. I'm trying to help the boy, and the doctor's going to help me. Now, I've got an idea. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. We need you, miss. Ain't that cozy. Where do I come in? Who helps me? I will. You do like Pop says, sugar. If you say so, Louie. I say so. Pop's my pal. Listen, miss, it's just a little trick. You'll manage, don't worry. All you have to do is laugh. Laugh? Did you say laugh? That's right. Laugh about what? It doesn't matter. About nothing at all, if you want to. It's part of a performance, uh, an act, so to speak. Understand? Did you hear that? I told you this guy thinks I got a leak in the attic. Who wants to laugh about nothing? Shut up. Why? This ain't a laughing matter. Shut up. Go on, Doc. I was called down here from El Canada to examine John again, after his recapture. I understand, Doctor. I'll be perfectly frank with you, Dr. Dunbar. His confession struck me like a bombshell. For no reason that I could detect, he found his memory sufficiently restored to admit the crime. John is my friend. I want to do anything I can. And I don't think you can do a thing. He stands convicted, and now he's confessed. He's talked himself right back into the gas chamber. What, in your opinion, brought about the confession? Would you say there was a link between the confession and the conversation you had with him? I'll make it easier for you, Doctor. John came here with one purpose. It had recurred to his mind that I was a witness to the tragedy. Who are you? Yes, I was, and I told him so. He then asked me why I didn't prevent him from... Well, from doing what he did. A logical question, wouldn't you say? Perfectly. I explained to him that the horrible sight I was suddenly confronted with threw me into a mental coma. And he accepted that? He did. I understand you studied at London University. Yes, I did. I'm a Stanford man. Really? How interesting. From what I gather, there must be a vital difference in the interpretation of medical ideas between our two countries. I'm afraid I missed the point. I was taught that a shock reaction, such as the one you just described, simply doesn't exist. What do you mean? I mean... You're lying, Doctor. <laughs> With your permission, I'll set aside that remark for the moment. If you reject the validity of my analysis, how do you explain John's behavior at the hospital, right under your very eyes, when he witnessed a murderous attack on a fellow patient and was unable to lift a finger? You know the answer, and so do I. Unconsciously, it came to him that what he faced was a repetition of a crime he'd witnessed once before. That frightening realization crippled his reflexes. That is not what he told me. He couldn't tell you because he's still not aware of it, but I can. I can tell you something else. You're the killer, and he's the witness to prove it. It's an interesting theory. I'm told they call Stanford the farm. I didn't know it was a detective farm. Let's investigate your contention for a moment, shall we? If he was the witness, why didn't he stop me? His mental health had been severely impaired. He didn't even know he was seeing anything. He'd been struck on the head with a sharp instrument. Is that what happened? The scars on his scalp are still there. They tell the story. What story? Those scars are the evidence of an injury which he received while attempting to subdue the girl. He fell and his head struck a rock. That's the story. The official story. It's on the record. It's on the record for lack of truth. The police didn't know any better. You do. I don't. But you think you do. I don't think. I know. I know you're lying, Doctor. Is that all? Not quite. I also know your war record. I know you were confined in a psychopathic ward in Banstead, England in 1942 for six months, and again in 1943 for three months. As a soldier, is that necessarily something to be ashamed of? As a soldier, no. As a doctor, it might have proven an obstacle. It wasn't the California sunshine that made you settle down here. It was the need to camouflage your past. You're not a doctor, Doctor. You're a mind reader. Where's your turban? You're not a doctor, Doctor. You're a patient.
Good evening, Doctor. I hope you're satisfied with yourself, Doctor. Extremely so. you to come here. Don't stare at me that way. But how did you get in? <laughs> You're funny. You make me laugh. I do, do I? <laughs> Men shouldn't get dramatic. Makes them look silly. <laughs> silly? <laughs> You're no different from the others, but you are honest about it. Rosemary and John and the rest, they giggled behind my back. And giggling's worse than laughing. You know that, don't you? Cut it out. What's this all about? I'll tell you what it's all about. You're all part of a scheme, aren't you? Rosemary. The man who just left, you and John. My friend, John. Why are you wearing that scarf? Tell me, why? Why not? It's mine. Oh, but it's more than that. This isn't just a scarf. Any scarf? Rose Marie was wearing a scarf like this. Oh, you're like her. Did you know that? She was beautiful. So are you. She laughed at me. And so did you. I remember exactly how I did it. Exactly. Loose, just like that. My hands made a knot. Like this. Why don't you move? And then my hands tightened the knot. Like this. Tighter, tighter. And your eyes are begging me for mercy, mercy, mercy. <coughs> Doctor is allergic to irrelevant laughter. That's all I was to him, a source of amusement. But I got even with you. For two years, I laughed at you. Say it. Say I ruined your life. Two years aren't a man's life. Two years in the dungeon? I was only haunted by four walls. You were trapped in the dungeon of your own conscience. Don't worry about me. I had a good time. I was enjoying it so much I couldn't leave. I had to stay and see the end. It was curiosity that killed the cat, wasn't it? Am I keeping you, gentlemen? In the tropical heat all life seems in vain Waiting for fate to bring The summer rains 
Hey, for you. Stand still, days pass by on and on, on and on. There's no end. Time's up. Where are you going? Back home, home, boundless and bare, the lone and level sand stretch far away. Summer rain will wash away.